So, who doesn't want to own a turbojet engine? I've wanted one since I was four years old, and uh, I've looked on eBay, and you can look on surplus uh, sources, and you can get a jet engine for tens of thousands of dollars, uh, military jet uh, uh, engines, uh, auxiliary power units for commercial jets. But these units are huge, and unless you've got a lot of skill, it's pretty difficult to uh, refurbish them or maintain them. And even once you have, they're so powerful that there's not a lot you can do with them unless you're planning to uh, build an experimental aircraft or to uh, go off-grid in a kind of unusual way. And so you can buy one of the RC or modeler uh, turbojet engines. They're remarkable pieces of hardware, both from a fabrication and a design point of view. They're lightweight, but they're very expensive. The least expensive one you'll find will probably cost uh, $2,000 or so, and they can go up to tens of thousands of dollars. And in addition, because they're so delicate, many of them require that you have them refurbished every 25 hours of use. And so if you want to have the skills to be able to do that yourself, you might think about building your own. Problem is the precision required in the machining is extremely high because of the very high speeds and stresses involved. And the materials you often have to use are rather exotic because of the high temperatures. You might decide uh, as an alternative to take, say, an automotive turbocharger and convert it into a jet engine like we're going to do. They've done the hard work, and all you really have to do is construct a combustion chamber, uh, some oil handling equipment, uh, some electronics to be able to monitor and control the engine. And although not a DIY type of project, for a weekend, uh, there's a lot of YouTube videos out there. There are a lot of forums out there that'll give you instructions in doing that. We're going to give you instructions on how to do that. Uh, but another sort of negative with these engines, at least from a flight point of view, is that they're built to interface between uh, an exhaust system and a um, engine block. And so often they're very heavily built to take the, the stresses involved in sort of a road vehicle and much heavier than they really need to be to just resist the forces and the temperatures of just the turbocharger. In addition to that, they have um, kind of unusual plumbing. They're feeding an internal combustion engine. And so for something that you want compact, the Rube Goldberg of the combustion chamber might be something that you want to stay away from. So another alternative might be, say, for example, to get a pulse jet engine much lower uh, engineering uh, precision, and if you want to buy them, less expensive. They're lightweight and powerful, but because they have a highly supersonic output, they tend to be very loud. And because almost everyone that you're going to be able to find designed or constructed have very uh, limited uh, fuel control systems, they tend to burn a lot of fuel for their thrust. We're going to modify this to improve on those things, but uh, you might not want to necessarily go to a pulse jet. You might want something continuous. Another alternative would be to get an electric ducted fan. These are pretty remarkable pieces of, of equipment. They're relatively inexpensive. They're turnkey. And you can get from maybe one or two kilograms of thrust up to as much as 20 kilograms of thrust out of these things. The problem with them, though, is they lack the sort of flame and fury of a real jet engine. And if you go on YouTube, you'll find a number of people who've shoved tubes on the back of a run-of-the-mill fan, squirted some butane or avgas in the back of them, and turned them into a blowtorch. And I'm not disparaging that because that's done for aesthetic purposes. They want a model to look like it's a military jet on afterburner. But they produce almost no uh, additional thrust because of the design is not being utilized to do that. And so... What we're going to do uh, with this build today is we're going to build a jet engine based on an electric ducted fan with an afterburner. Now before you click off and disgust, understand that in order to get a substantial augmentation of power out of something like this, you have to start with an extremely powerful fan and you have to add a lot of heat, millions of BTU. 
In addition, you have to design it in order to be able to utilize that expansion that occurs in the engine in order to get the maximum thrust. You have to size things correctly. In order to understand how that works, you have to understand a little bit about how a turbojet works. And very simply, there are three major components to a turbojet, four if you have an afterburner. And those components are the turbo compressor, the combustion chamber, the exhaust pipe that has the turbine in it that generates the torque to drive the compressor, and if you have one, an afterburner. Now, you may believe or have been told that the reason for the combustion chamber is to increase the temperature and the pressure of the gas in order to drive the turbine and augment the thrust. That's not exactly true because water doesn't flow uphill and gases don't flow from a low to a high pressure region. What happens in the combustion chamber is the added energy and heat doesn't increase the pressure, it increases the volume substantially. And so from the ex exit of the turbo compressor all the way out the end of even an afterburner, the pressure continually drops as it must, but the volume changes. And as the, the hot gases from the combustion chamber pass through the turbo turbine, the turbine extracts a lot of energy and the gases cool and shrink. In order to keep the engine from melting, they divert a fair amount of the turbo compressor's output around the combustion chamber and around the exhaust duct to keep things cool. So it ends up flowing out the end of a jet engine, has a substantial amount of oxygen in it, and has cooled substantially. In the afterburner, additional fuel is added, additional heat, additional expansion, and that allows for additional thrust. But in order to not choke the engine, what has to happen is you have to increase the cross-sectional area of the engine in order to be able to, to get that additional thrust. And the way to sort of proportion that or calculate that is you need to increase the exhaust area from an afterburner uh, by the square root of the absolute increase in the temperature that occurs between the compressor and the exhaust. And that absolute temperature is from absolute zero. So at room temperature, which may be say 27 degrees centigrade, we're actually at 300 degrees absolute or Kelvin. So if we were to quadruple the temperature and raise it to 1200 degrees Kelvin, you measure 900 degrees centigrade, what we will do is we will quadruple the temperature and therefore we must double the cross-sectional area of the exit from the uh, afterburner. And that's why most turbojets that have afterburners, all of them, have adjustable nozzles in order to get maximum thrust without afterburner and to open up and not choke the engine and obtain the uh, uh, improved thrust that occurs with the afterburner. So what I'm going to demonstrate outside is a built-up engine based on this fan and based on a few components that I'll lay out for you. And then we're going to demonstrate that engine, show you kind of how it works, and show you where we're going from there. So come on with me and I'll show you what's going to happen outside. Okay, so here's the layout of the engine. We have the fan I showed you inside located in front. And behind the fan is a cone, a steel cone, that acts to deflect the air to a small annular gap between the inside of the tube and the edge of the cone. What that does is it accelerates the air in this part of the engine and creates a much larger pressure gain when the air then stagnates inside of the combustion chamber. The cone also serves to protect the engine from the intense infrared radiation that's given off in the combustion chamber. And finally, the cone produces a rather stagnant area of uh, air behind it where we've got located a weed burner. This is a commercial weed burner, propane-powered weed burner, that is self-aspirating. And what that means is that the uh, propane, as it exhausts through the small nozzle, will draw in air and produce a stable flame that comes out of the end of the tube. It's rated at about 500,000 BTU. We've measured it, though, and it's closer to about 400,000 BTU of output. Because the flame that comes out of here is about a 40 centimeter, a 40 centimeter long jet, uh, you wouldn't get very good mixing of the annular flow of air around here. And so behind the uh, weed burner is a deflector or flame holder. These strips are actually made out of tungsten, 
and the tungsten allows us to run the exhaust temperatures much higher than you can in a typical turbojet because we don't have any sensitive materials inside here. In addition, we've got the inside of the tube from the, about the back half, from the halfway point backward, coated with a ceramic material that reduces the oxidation at very high temperatures. That very high temperature gain is what allows us to gain something back for the rather low compression ratios in these fans. Finally, we have in back here what looks like an adjustable nozzle for an afterburner on a jet engine. This isn't really adjustable on a real-time basis, but what it allows us to do is by sliding these strips in and out, we can fine-tune the exhaust diameter, as I was talking about earlier, to maximize the thrust based on the temperature gain. Because even though those ratios I gave you before were theoretical, depending on the efficiency of your mixing and the flow obstructions that occur inside the engine, you might want to tweak those. And so once you've established what the diameter is, you could certainly eliminate this complexity with a simple constricting cone. So to run the engine, we have three propane tanks here. As I said, 400,000 BTU. That isn't nearly enough. So with these additional entrance ports, we're going to be putting in about a total of 2 million BTU in order to get the flame temperature up here to around 1,500 degrees centigrade, which is just about the melting point of stainless steel. And finally, a spark plug that's, uh, that triggers the initial burn, but once the burn occurs here, it's very stable no matter what the settings are with the fan. We have a very powerful ESC that will uh, produce up to 5,000 watts in the uh, fan here, and the entire thing is mounted on a slide that will allow us to sort of compare thrust levels depending on how we're running the engine. So, you ready? Let's get started. I take a couple of hundred watts and send it to the fan in order to ventilate the tube. I then open up the propane to the weed burner and fire the spark plug in order to get a stable flame burning. Once I've done that, I can attach the thermometer. It doesn't seem to like the high voltage from the starter circuit. Check the voltage from the battery, and then begin ramping up the propane to the weed burner and the voltage to the fan, until I get to about 400,000 BTU and about 1,500 watts. You can see very early on that the thrust increases to the point that I peg the 10-pound spring in a balance scale. I'm going to need a better spring for future work. Nevertheless, the flame temperature at uh, 400,000 BTU at about 1,500 watts is about 500 to 600 degrees centigrade. The addition of any uh, more electric power to the fan doesn't really increase the thrust very much because working against me is a lowering of the exhaust temperature with the additional mass flow. In order to increase the thrust any further, I have to open up the secondary and the tertiary propane tanks to add additional heat. As I do so, the temperature continues to rise, and when I get to a flame temperature of around 1,000 degrees, the tube begins to glow a dull cherry red, and the sound levels increase substantially. The fan from JP Hobby is a 90mm 12S fan. Very happy with it. It's held up very well, produces a lot of uh, native thrust, but the single stage axial turbine really doesn't have enough compression ratio. And so, when you, what you saw early on with the uh, additional fan that I'm holding in the video is going to be installed into the jet engine as a second stage to increase the compression ratio and increase the mass flow. That should allow additional fuel to be added, but more so it should allow the fuel that we are burning to produce more effective thrust. In any case, I'm very happy with the engine as it is, and uh, in future videos as we increase the thrust and increase the uh, compression ratios, uh, I think this is going to be a pretty successful project. We're also planning to incorporate liquid fuel instead of the secondary and tertiary protein just to make things a lot more convenient. In any case, I want to thank you very much for watching. This was a lot of fun, and you have a great evening.